हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक ऑफ एनाटॉमी एंड दैट इज अबाउट द लैरिंग्स अ पार्ट फॉर द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ वॉइस दैट इज फोनेशन एंड आल्सो अ पार्ट ऑफ यूर रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम एंड लेट मी टॉक इन डिटेल अबाउट द लैरिंग्स एंड आई विल ट्राई माय लेवल बेस्ट टू एक्सप्लेन particular that the vocal cord that is latent complication is there to understand but i will try to explain my level best so that you can understand it properly the larynx extend from the last part of oropharynx to the trachea this middle portion it is a larynx it extend from c3 what you got to see six vertebra and dimensions and all this you can uh, look in the book now this larynx is composed of cartilages joints and whenever there is joint definitely there are ligaments and the muscles muscles for the movement of joints ligaments to strengthen the joints and magically the ligaments of the larynx they are creating thick folds and those folds are much important in the larynx so proceed with the cartilages larynx is composed of total nine cartilages among nine three are paired and three are unpaired cartilages the single or unpaired cartilages are number 1 thyroid number 2 cricoid and number 3 epiglottis these are three single unpaired cartilages and three pair cartilages are arytenoid cuneiform and cornical arytenoid cuneiform and corniculate these are pair cartilages means they are two in number in totally there are nine cartilages now let's proceed with one by one cartilage now the first and the prime importance is a thyroid cartilage is a thyroid cartilage you can you can look you can look this say this is the shape of thyroid cartilage now if you are if you are looking carefully there something is going up something is going down there is a notch and there is a prominence are you getting so this is one lamina of thyroid cartilage and this is another lamina of thyroid cartilage the, both lamina of the thyroid cartilage they meet anteriorly is it this is anterior side they meet anteriorly whereas the posterior aspect of the thyroid cartilage it remain apart it remain apart from each other now the posterior aspect of the lamina posterior aspect it gives two horns it gives two horns one is at the superior portion and one is at the inferior portion the horn at the superior portion is called as superior horn whereas horn at the inferior portion but naturally it is called as inferior horn or you can say it as a corno so there is one corno superior corno and there is another corno inferior corno these cornos are made for special purpose these cornos are made for special purpose and this is what the situation of thyroid thyroid cartilage this is the thyroid cartilage having um, right lamina and left lamina now at the right at the lamina outer surface of the lamina there is oblique line on both side there is oblique line and that line is for providing the attachment to the muscles of the larynx that line is for the attachment to the muscles of the larynx so this is one cartilage which is v shaped anteriorly it is attached posteriorly it remains free posterior ends they are remaining free there are two cornea or two horns one is superior horn and one is inferior horn there is one notch there is one notch there is prominence so these are the features of these are the features of thyroid cartilage number second cartilage is cricoid cartilage that is cricoid cartilage it is a cartilage of ring cell it is a cartilage of ring cell 
where the posterior aspect of cartilage where the posterior aspect of cartilage is broad is broad and the anterior aspect of cartilage is thin posteriorly the cartilage is broad and anteriorly it is thin the narrow anterior part the narrow anterior part of the ring is called as arch whereas the broad posterior part of the ring is called as lamina there is arch and there are there is lamina so narrow anterior part is arch and posterior broad part of the cartilage is is lamina the third unpaired is epiglottis epiglottis is a leaf shaped cartilage having upper portion which is broad and lower portion which is narrow a pointed lower portion this pointed lower portion having its attachment with the notch of thyroid cartilage this we discussed thyroid cartilage having two lamina and there is anteriorly at the upper part there is notch and this pointed part of the epiglottis having attachment with the notch this epiglottis your cricoid they are important cricoid is important because crito cricoid is helping to um, attach the important cartilages more important cartilages which are much valuable for the vocal cord and all the cartilages they are working so that they are working in a in a way so that they can perform the proper function in correlation with each other this epiglot is serving right and left margin so these right and left margins are providing attachment to airy epiglottic fold what is the name of fold airy epiglottic now airy stand for arytenoid cartilage and epiglottic for epiglottis so the so the uh, membrane so the membrane which is taking origin from arytenoid which is taking origin from arytenoid it is ascending up and attached to the epiglottis either either side of the epiglottis at the right side and at the left side so these are the airy epiglottic fold attached at the margin of the epiglottis it's a pair cartilage that is arytenoid cartilage now we are we are knowing this is cricoid cartilage having its lamina and anterior small part now this lamina of the cricoid cartilage these two these two cartilages arytenoid they are sitting over the upper border of the lamina of the cricoid cartilage these arytenoid cartilages are having upper part are having upper part anterior process you can say anterior medial process and posterior process this upper part it get flat so that it can provide attachment to one more cartilage which is a pair cartilage of the larynx and now this anterior medial this anterior medial process it give attachment to the ligament it give attachment to the ligament and it is more much important in the formation of fold and the name of that fold is vocal fold whereas the posterior portion it give attachment to the muscles so there are two processes one is anterior process and one is posterior process of the your arytenoid one process give attachment to vocal fold and will posterior process give attachment attachment to the muscle now the next cartilage is corniculate this corniculate cartilage are small cone shaped corniculate shaped cartilage and they are the small nodes which are situated at the upper up, upper part of the arytenoid cartilage at the upper part of the arytenoid cartilage there are two corniculate and the last pair cartilage is cartilage of the larynx are cuneiform they are rod shaped small cartilages so these are nine cartilages among nine three are unpaired and three are paired so this is about the cartilages of larynx About the next one is the joints, joints of the larynx. Larynx has two joints, and both the joints are formed by a cartilage that is cricoid cartilage, a ring shaped cartilage. So, if it is forming the joint, the name must start with the cricoid. So, the joints are cricothyroid. One joint of the cricoid cartilage 
with the thyroid cartilage that is the joint and second joint between the cricoid and arytenoid the, the cartilages which are sitting on the lamina crico arytenoid one joint is crico thyroid joint so that thyroid cartilage can move and second is crico arytenoid so that arytenoid cartilage can move because there is need of movement so that we can produce the sound there is need of movement of the folds and those folds and those mucous membranes are attached with these cartilages so there is need of joints so these two joints are formed by cricoid cartilage one with the thyroid that is called as crico thyroid cartilage and second with the arytenoid that is called as crico arytenoid cartilage and one more thing both the joints are of synovial variety both the joints are of synovial type